Hello, beautiful. Welcome to the Prosperous One. So why, what makes some women coaches uncomfortable or why do they find it challenging to ask for the money or like I call it, to ask for the sale, whether it's in their messaging, in email, wherever, or the most popular one in the high ticket sales conversation, a natural high ticket sales conversation. What makes it so challenging? You know, sometimes it's just a scarcity mindset. Maybe they've had a bad experience or maybe they just have a thing about money, okay? But a lot of times it's just, it's more than that. There are more practical reasons why we have a sales conversation. We, 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 get, we get to the part where the client is, is sold on, on working with us and we don't make the offer or we don't create a space that supports the client to raise her hand and ask for the sale and sell herself into the offer. It's because the first thing is we're not properly disqualifying clients. I've said this a hundred times. Proper disqualification is the key to asking for the sale. It's the key to your best feet high in coaching clients raising their hands and asking for the sale and then selling themselves into the high ticket sales coaching offer, into the high ticket coaching offer, whether it is when they read your email, where they hear your messaging in a podcast, or maybe they, they see on YouTube or in the sales conversation itself. Now, what do I mean by proper disqualification? Proper disqualification is when you create messaging that repels everyone that your offer is not for. It's when you have a high ticket sales application form that has questions that clients have to answer and then self lead. So they self select whether they're a great fit for that offer before they get on the sales conversation with you. When you let people self select themselves into the sales conversation, the answer is always a yes because they don't come through the gate unless they're ready to work with you. They're ready to say yes to themselves for that investment in that offer today. But a lot of times, women coaches will not pre qualify. And I say to them, what's going on? Well, I don't want to leave anyone behind. I don't want to sound elitist. I don't want to, I don't want to make it seem like I only work with certain people. But you do only work with certain people. And you have to let those people self-select themselves and self-lead themselves into the sales conversation so you're not convincing anyone or trying to overcome objections. Asking for the sale of old way is dead. Where you have to knock people over the head and convince them of your value and then knock them over the head and tell them why they shouldn't object and why they must buy right now because it's a no-brainer. That's dead, okay? Now it is people self-selecting, raising their hand and saying, this is for me. She's talking to me. I'm so, she's so aligned and connected to what I want. It makes sense for me to work with her. So when you properly disqualify, the only people that come on are ready to invest. It gives both of you that comfort level so that either they ask for the sale or you do. But when you let everyone come to the sales conversation, one, you're exhausted, you're tired, you're bitter, you're, you're cranky, you, you don't have time for your family, you don't have time for yourself, your health is at risk because you're on 50 sales calls. No, as a high ticket coach, you work with five people or 10 people, a few desperate clients for you. And you're not doing sales calls every day because you have your people for the long term. And you can actually enjoy the life that you created the business to enjoy. So properly disqualified. You're not leaving anyone behind. The people that don't self-select have a coach for them. There's a coach somewhere that is willing to do this for $25 an hour. Don't cry over this. There's a coach out there willing to do this for $10 an hour because they have such a big pot. And that brings us to the next thing. Why is it challenging for women coaches to ask for the sale or ask for the money in a natural high ticket sales conversation? It's because they have big, huge hearts and they want to do good and they're so good at giving. So they give their time, their energy, their money, their, they, they'll give you their kidney if you needed it but they don't want to receive anything from you because mm, it feels yucky. I need to give, but I can't receive anything from you because no, 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 I am way too spiritual for that. You see, when you assume, when you assume, it makes you arrogant. So when you assume that you're here to give value and that your client cannot afford to pay you for that value, you are destroying your client's life. 
the free things that you give your client have no value. The real value is in the expertise and the work that you actually do with your clients, not in the free advice or the free things you share on YouTube or the workshop. That is never the value. That can create a shift, an aha moment, a recognition in the client, in the way she sees herself to realize, oh, I want this. But well, she's giving me this, this is enough, I'm gonna go now. You do a great disservice. So get out of your client's bank account, get out of her checkbook and allow her to self-select, self-lead herself or raise her hand and say, I am willing to afford this investment. I am creative and resourceful enough to be willing to afford and pay for this thing. You know, I always say, if you had a brain tumor, God forbid, you had a brain tumor, and you went to the hospital and the doctor was gonna operate on you, you don't get a discount because you have a tumor, okay? So why are you giving your coaching away for free to people who wanna make hundred thousand dollars a month who want to find the love of their life who want to be confident and get the promotion and do all of the things what gives you the right to take the power away from them to self-select and self-lead themselves what gives you that right just because you have money issues you can work that out with your therapist or your coach but don't put your money crap on the innocent bystander potential client who wants to come in to your offer. The third bit is a misunderstanding of what value truly means. You see, it might be challenging to ask for the sale or to ask for the money if you think that value is tied to your time and you think, oh, it only takes me 10 minutes to do this. Yeah, it takes you 10 minutes to do because of the 30 years of school, the five certifications, the 10 years experience and skills that you've built up and all the training that you've had. That's why it takes you 10, you know, 10 minutes. And so they are paying for the 30 years of the, the, the skills, the experiences and everything you've built so that you can do this for them in one minute, 10 minutes or 30 minutes. They don't care how much time it takes you. They just want the result. So don't equate the value that you give to your client. Don't equate the outcome and result with the amount of time it takes you. Because when you do that, your heart will never let you ask for the sale because you're thinking, oh my gosh, I'm taking candy from a baby. Why is the baby getting candy? So these are the three reasons that I've seen over and over again in the coaching industry for why transformational women coaches, Christian women coaches, spiritual women coaches refuse to ask for the sale. And women in sales need to understand that value is separate from time. It's separate from time, you need to understand that you don't need to be in bed with your client's wallet or your client's you know, checkbook or bank account and properly disqualify. There's seven billion people on the planet. The odds that you're gonna find and work with your best high coaching clients or your best high coaching clients are gonna find you because you don't go finding them, they're not Easter eggs. The odds that your best high coaching clients are gonna find you when you make yourself a lighthouse of who you're offering your messaging out there, they're in your favor. The odds are in your favor because there's seven billion people. And as a high ticket coach, you only need one or two or five or 10, that's it. So let me know how this lands for you and how you're going to ask for the sale. And before I forget, I'm writing my first book, Asking for the Sale. So stay tuned, hit subscribe, because I'm going to be sharing a lot more about asking for the sale and how to ask for the money or make the offer in a high ticket sales conversation or in your messaging so that your high-end coaching clients raise their hand, ask for the sale, and sell themselves to the high ticket coaching offer. It's been good having you.